A few weeks ago, I picked up a lot of Android phones in various condition. Having got quite the bargain, I thought I'd repair the two damaged phones, starting with the Sony Xperia 10 Mark III. It's got a cracked screen that, while usable, does impact its saleability. Having only repaired one Sony phone in the past, let's see how repairable this one is. It's over to the heat plate for a few minutes where the back of the phone can be heated. Having gotten used to the strong adhesive found on some of Google's and Apple's phones, I was surprised to see this phone's back glass panel separate with such ease. In true Android fashion, we're greeted with plastic brackets that secure most of the internals in place, as well as acting as various antennas. The lower piece also houses the loudspeaker. All secured with Phillips screws. However, there are two sizes. The black coloured ones being longer than the silver ones that are used around the cameras. Unlike other Android phones I've worked on, the upper retaining plastic is separated into three pieces, with each of the pieces being clipped into one side of the phone. Not only have we now removed every screw we need to perform the display replacement, but we also have a proper look at the layout of the phone and its 4500mAh battery. It'll be the first thing to disconnect before we begin working on freeing the motherboard, which takes very little time as it's just held in with a few flex cables. Lifting the board out, we can get a closer look at it. It's packing a Snapdragon 690 processor, 128 gigs of storage and 6 gigs of RAM. Despite its size, it supports 5G networking, two SIM cards or an SD card. With the board removed, we now have access to the front-facing camera, which we'll remove next, before the headphone jack. Sony is currently one of the only phone manufacturers still putting headphone jacks on their higher-end smartphones. The battery is secured with stretch-release adhesive, the least predictable adhesive around. From years of experience, I know that you just can't pull it at a 90-degree angle, but with pieces of the plastic frame in the way, not even removing the charging port first will help. As I suspected, it would shear right off on removal. The other tab can be pulled horizontally, meaning it came out without issue. I tried to retrieve the other tab using some tweezers and remove it using them, but got nowhere. So it's a job for some trusty alcohol. Not only can it relieve your tension, but the phone's too. With the 17 watt hour battery out, we can see how those tabs work and the possible design flaw. The left tab is blocked by some plastic, while the one on the right had a clear path for removal. Now with the proper clearance, the previous unremovable tab is freed as intended. There's not much left to go, with the next things to remove being the charge port and vibration motor. Depending on your replacement display assembly, you may need to transfer this interconnect cable. I removed mine before realising the new display already came with this part attached. Lastly, there's two antenna cables running the length of the housing that are both taped and clipped into place. With that, we've disassembled the Sony Xperia 10 Mark III. Talk about easy, we're not even four minutes into this video. It's modular enough that you can replace common components, but simple enough to make it easy to repair. So let's take a look at our new display. Many repairable phones have parts too expensive to make repairs like this viable, but this Sony OLED cost me only 123 Aussie dollars or around 78 US. That's cheaper than most. It comes attached with a new frame and interconnect cable, simplifying the repair further. Also included in the box was a screen protector which we can put on later. With everything removed from the old display assembly, it can be transferred over to the new one, starting with the antenna cables that need to be firmly pressed into their respective grooves in the side of the housing before the sticker is attached on top. For those wondering why this is only the second Sony phone I've worked on, Sony no longer sells their phones in Australia since about 2018, meaning this one has been imported from somewhere. Sony makes the cameras for the iPhone, 
Their phones have headphone jacks, micro SD card slots, and even some have 4K screens. So they know what they're doing when it comes to making a phone, but I don't know why Sony phones aren't popular. You never even hear when they release a new one. Once the headphone jack is in, it's time for the motherboard and all of its flex cables to be attached. Before we glue the battery back in, I'll loosely attach it to test the new display. Thankfully, it's working correctly with functional touch and no burn-in, which can occur if someone sells you a used screen. Powering the device back off, I can now prep the battery for installation. After it's removed, I can attach some battery adhesive. The specific adhesive is from an iPhone, but it's similar to what was original, it just needs to be cut down to size. I'll then position it and stick it down into place. Proceeding, the plastic protective film can be removed and the battery can be installed into the Sony Xperia 10 Mark III. Once connected, it's time to get the plastic antenna pieces reattached. Starting with the two on the sides before the main center piece is attached. Remembering those two shorter screws go near the cameras. Proceeding, I can remove any old adhesive left behind on the back glass panel before applying the new adhesive. For this specific device, I've opted to use liquid adhesive on the basis that the original was quite thin. Meaning there's a chance I'll get a bad aftermarket replacement that will result in the back lifting off in a few hours or days. Using this liquid glue isn't as clean, but I know it will keep the back on, but still be easy to remove if needed. Just make sure you don't get any on the cameras. With that, the back glass can be pressed down into place and secured with some clamps while the glue cures. I can also clean off any excess that seeps out the sides. After a few hours, I can remove the clamps and rubber band. Now, all that's left to do is remove the plastic protective film from our new display. And we're done. So this is it. A quick and easy Sony Xperia 10 Mark III display replacement. Like most phones, it's still held together with glue, but it's a little weaker than most. Inside, there's few screws and easy access to major components. And best of all, there's no paired components. That power button fingerprint reader works flawlessly after replacement as part of the new housing. An incredible feat of engineering. The screen protector that was included with the screen wasn't even close to fitting, which makes me wonder why it was included. They clearly knew the size of the screen. Anyway, the phone is repaired and ready for its next owner. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.